ready for a little recon Chris and Bill gonna take you away you never gone Current events, politics and the military Hold on tight Hi, and welcome back to the second episode. Yes, the second episode of Recon Up with Chris and Bill. Today, it's a, uh, well, pretty rainy day here in Houston. It's Sunday, May 4th, and uh, I've got my esteemed colleague, Doc Bill Brown, here with me. And we've got a, you know, we're going to try to tease out a couple of subjects today. As Bill and I were talking earlier, it's been a slow week. So, so Bill, what do you think we ought to talk about today, my man? Well, since really nothing's been going on this week, uh, <laughs> I, I think it's going to be a short show. Um, so what I would like to talk about, let's talk about the first amendment and part of the first amendment, it says, you know, that Congress shall make no laws respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise there or are abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government to readdress any of the grievances in which they have. You know, if, if only in today's society, if we could peacefully protest without, you know, all these damn cops coming in and uh, beating people over the head and arrest them. I, I think it's totally wrong. So well, what say you, know, you, Chris? Yeah, you know, man, you hit it right on the head peacefully, right? I mean, kind of like uh, I'm reminded of that group of misfits called Antifa. You know, it seems like everybody now these days, you know, hey, listen, man, and you and I talked about this. Protesting is literally as American as apple pie. You know, Americans 100%. love to protest. We love to bitch. I mean, we're, we're doing this podcast right now, freedom of, you know, freedom of expression. We're technically in the press now. Uh, one of the more interesting things about the First Amendment, I'm a big advocate of the First Amendment, is you notice it says it's, it's freedom of religion, not freedom from religion. So there are a lot of people, you know, that say, hey, I want to have a prayer group in my high school and people get mad about it. Like, you can't you can't do that. Well, no, it simply says Congress won't make any laws or the government won't make any laws establishing a religion. It doesn't say you can't exercise. Absolutely. You can exercise your religion. Hey, the first church of Satan came about. You can you can be as weird and have the craziest you know, religious ideas you want. You can do that. You can protest. You can protest anything peacefully. But as we're seeing today. You know, people want to burn shit down and then they get mad when cops go in there and, you know, kind of rough them up a bit. Well, don't burn shit down. Yeah. Um, stay within the law. That, that, that is all you have to do. If, if you want to get your point out, just stay within the law. Um, of course, we all know everyone likes to have those clicks and everyone oh, yeah. just loves oh, yeah. the, you know, the um, no one likes a, a good, boring protest. You know, right, right. Um, I I do remember back when I was growing up. You know, my my parents were were uh, uh, seasonal field workers, so we would travel around different areas, and you know, they were all unionized. You know, and, and, and this is like back in the seventies and eighties. Cesar Chavez wasn't he the the guy leading all that? Yes, yes, he was, and and you know, we would actually go on strike, which was protest. About awesome. whatever, you know, we were, of course, I was a little yeah. kid there, you know, it was just my parents. But you know what? Every single one that I went to back then yeah, were very peaceful. Granted, um, not all of them were peaceful, but we got our point across of mm-hmm. why we were protesting without the violence. Right. You know. Well, and, and, you know, you, you and I being veterans, and I know you and I talked about it a little bit. I love your opinion. It, it may differ from mine. Um, you know, what do you think about people? You know, I've got an American flag behind me. Well, what do you think about people that uh, desecrate the flag, burn on, you know, step on the flag, burn it, whatever? Is that is that a legitimate form of protest? Or what do, what do you think, man? Um, me, me and my wife have spoken about this quite a bit. I would never... Burn the flag disrespectfully. Right. You know, if right. there is someone standing next to me who is burning the flag, man, it, it would chap my hide. I would yep. be infuriated. But those are the rights in which mm-hmm. I fought for, for him, for that person That's to right. do that right in front of me. And you know what? I disagree with it. 
But you know what? It's your right. As long as you're not committing violence against me or, you know, saying hurtful words, um, <laughs> I, I am good with it. And, and, you know, when I took the oath to defend the Constitution, um, yeah. that's one of the things, man. Free speech, burning the flag, burning the Koran. Free yep. speech. It um, is. May not like it, but you know what? That's why me and you both fought for That's this right. country. So individuals can do that. And, and which, again, I don't like it, but it's their right to do. No, I, know, I, I agree with you 100%, man. And you and I talked about it. I mean, I think it's personally offensive to me, but... Hey, that is a valid form of protest. Like you said, burning the Quran, dude. I think that's offensive. It is. Uh, but you you can absolutely do that as a form of protest. Now don't take that Quran and you know chuck it at somebody's face. Now you're crossing the line into that, you know, violence and that's no longer protest, right? That's inciting violence. You know, you can't walk into a theater and you know scream fire. That's not protected by the First Amendment. But uh, you can certainly go in there and say, hey, I disagree with this. Uh, you know, and that's, again, it's American as apple pie. You know, it's interesting. I was talking, I've got a British friend and there's a situation. I don't know if you saw this in the news. There was a, uh, a Jewish man that was walking through. They had some protests, you know, again, the Palestinian, the Palestinian protests are even going on in London. And this Jewish man is walking near the protest and a cop comes up to him says, you need to get out of here because I may arrest you because you're very clearly Jewish and your presence here is inciting these people. And so I reached out to my, my, you know, British friend and I said, man, Hey, this is why we have a first amendment. Are you kidding me? You're going to arrest that dude. He has as much right to be there as anybody else. And the fact that they may find his presence offensive. So what he has a right to be there. They have a right to protest here in this country over there. They don't Canada don't have the same rights. That's why our constitution is just amazing. And Hey, as Americans, we love to, we love to fight over our constitution more than anybody in the world, but uh, it's an amazing document. Oh, Oh, it is. And, but what I don't like is how the media kind of portrays uh, some of the counter protesters. Right. You know, yep. Uh, um, I, I, I was actually reading some of the stuff uh, yesterday and this is no kidding. What 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 they were saying about the you know counter protests? Most white young males yeah, are attending the counter protest. Yeah, gathering of large crowds sure. of white men singing the Star yeah. Spangled Banner. Or, right. Or you know the the uh, best one was the two white people wearing the American flag overalls. Yep. Yep. You know, who were directing it right at yep. the black female graduate yep. student. Yeah, of course. And and you're like, okay, <laughs> you yeah. know, it's fucking America. You know, I, right. I don't care if that person's white, brown, black, yellow, yep. green, whatever. You know, they have a right to do it. Uh, but don't point out, you know, oh, that white man you know, doesn't agree with the, you know, pro-Palestinian individuals. Well, that's right. Look at the majority of the pro-Palestinian uh, protesters. You know, uh, you could probably say most of them are white. That, that's true. And so. rich white kids, you know, it's funny. Do you remember that protest a couple of years ago? You had that, uh, that high school kid, his name was Nick Sandman. Do you remember that? And oh, he was yeah. with, the, yeah, on that trip with his school, Catholic school or something. <laughs> And you had that uh, Native American dude um, trying to remember his name, but he was completely full of shit about his military background and everything else. And the only thing the media captured was a tiny little, you know, about this much right of his face. Yeah, yeah. And it made it look like the kid was taunting this guy. And it turns out that this, you know, Native American elder or whatever he was, was pounding the drum in the kid's face. Kids just sitting there smiling, didn't say anything, wasn't rude, wasn't anything. It ended up suing the shit out of, you know, all the big media and winning a ton of money. And on that note, I want to say that uh, I'll have to look that guy's name up, but that Native American elder was in the Marine Corps and claimed that he was a recon ranger, of course, had to claim that. You know, he was in Vietnam, of course, had to claim that. You know, it turns out he, he was like a reservist refrigerator repairman for like a year and a half, and then he got kicked out. You yeah, know, but, yeah. but you know, boy, the media spun that, like, you know, privileged little white kids, you know, picking on this, you know, poor... Na elder Native American who really was not even part of the Native American 
community until much, much, much later in life. Um, yeah, and, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm glad that, you know, he recognized who he is and he got in there, but boy, the media spun it like nobody's business, man. Yeah. Uh, don't want to get into Rittenhouse, but, um, yes. Oh yeah. Know, media yeah. spins it one way. Oh yeah. And, and then, you know, everyone else is screwed. Then everyone else has to, you know, jump on board and try to follow what, oh, yeah. what the media says. Well, and, and let's, let's shift gears a little bit. Cause I don't know if you saw what just came out. So the house, uh, subpoenaed a big tack for all the records yeah. on the Biden uh, censorship program. Right. And you yeah. have, you know, Meta who owns you know, Google, you've got Alphabet, you've got Facebook, all these companies coming out and they've got internal emails and memos saying the Biden administration, they, they were even saying we're, we're being pressured to silence people about things like the vaccine and COVID. And, you know, and you and I had this happen, you know, you can be on Facebook, you make a joke about the vaccine, right. And it turning you into a monster or whatever, suddenly boom, 30 days in the hole on Facebook. I got hit so many times. I can't even count. And you're like, you know, what the hell's going on here? But you want to talk about, you know, George Orwell is probably, you know, laughing his ass off wherever he happens to be right now going, Hey man, I wrote about this, you know, decades yeah. ago, I warned you about this, you know? And, and, you know, it's funny because, uh, and I, I'm, I'm going to use the word Twitter because when Twitter, yeah, was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah when, when, when Twitter was Twitter, not owned by Elon Musk, right. uh, I, I first signed up. You know? Oh yeah. Oh, me and, too. Uh, I, I had zero posts. I had a bunch yeah. of followers. I followed a bunch of people. And the only thing I did was I liked three uh, posts from someone else. And one of them was a joke about two married men. Mm -hmm. And my account was suspended. Yep. And, and that is all I did was actually like a joke. You know, it wasn't an offensive joke. Nope. It had nothing to do with domestic violence or right, right. You know, abuse or anything. And and so that actually happened a couple of years ago. And at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, you know, when I get on that old account and it says your account is suspended. <laughs> well, still suspended. I, you know, I always do, you know, it says appeal and I always send them like, you know, two or three uh emails of course you, you know i know no one's seeing them but this yeah, makes me yeah. feel good you know because they they never came back and they're like you know we'll just put this on you know your original ticket back from 2016 um but now i don't have that issue but yeah uh media well if, if well you, you saw what happened to me just a week ago right did i so i was on facebook and remember i we did this podcast but i did another one talking about the anti-palestinian protests and i did kind of a history of the u.s and anti-semitism and this and that yep. next thing you know i get a notice from facebook we removed your post because it violates community standards. It was a post I had made three months ago. And you know what the topic was? I had retweeted or retweeted. I'd reposted a story from paleontology today talking about how they found a cave. I'm a super nerd, a cave of uh, sloths that were the size of rhinoceros back, you know, wow. 50 million years ago. That was it, man. Something yeah, yeah. completely benign three months ago. I don't even remember posting it three months later. After I do this podcast, I get a warning. They've they've kicked that post off and said, violate our standards again. You're going to once again be suspended from Facebook. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is complete coincidence here, of course. You know, because that, yeah. that, you know, I mean, it, it's complete nonsense. And there's always a correlation between when you say something and then they come back and, you know, they try to hammer you. And it's, it's you know, it's, it's control, man. It's control. Oh, you know? and, and that is what this administration's doing. Oh, yeah. You know? Um, and getting back to your uh, topic with, you know, uh, what the administration did with, you know, X, Facebook, all of them where they're like, hey, you know, we don't like it when, you know, people say this stuff. So, you know, it might be in your best interest to, you know, kind of cut that out of the oh, yeah. daily feed. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and then. You know, the administration is all like, well, you know, we we just asked them. It's actually that, on that's right. them. You know, that's right. and and you know, and, and and they're saying, but wait, you know, you said or else. What's that, that, that or that's else? Right. Yeah, that's not asking. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. or else you're yeah. gonna give us some money. 
you know, just, just let me know. Well, so, so our, our F, F, PV, uh, F president, president Biden, F means feckless, not what people are assuming I'm saying feckless president Biden. He came out a week or so ago and said the quiet part out loud. He came out, he was doing a, one of his pressers or whatever he was doing, who knows talking. And he said, this is an election between democracy and freedom. He literally said that this is going to be an election, mm -hmm. a choice between democracy and freedom. Well, wait a second. What are you talking about here, man? You know, we are a democracy and our country is based on and, and they aren't mutually exclusive concepts here, you know, but our rights have been more eroded over the last four years. And, and quite frankly, uh, I'll, I'll even say, it, you know, I wasn't a big fan of some of the Republican presidents. Um, you know, there's some things about Trump I really don't like, um, but our rights have been eroded more under Obama and under Biden than they have in generations in generations i mean look at you know shifting gears again look at title nine you know it shocks it shocks the conscience in my mind you've got a daughter i've got a I stepdaughter do. it shocks the conscience that you've got people that are like roe v wade's being shot down or, or you know our, our young ladies are at risk and this and that dude women fought for generations to have the same rights in sports and education everything as men title nine gets up there biden with the swipe of a pen says hey you know what not anymore if you're a dude you now can identify as a woman, take all these opportunity from biological women. I mean, it's, it's shocking to me. And, and you know what? Nobody on the left is saying a damn thing about it. No. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad I'm not in high school right now because oh, with yeah. my personality, <laughs> I mean, one day I would show up wearing a wig with ponytails yeah. and I would be all up in the woman's restroom, you know, going like, <laughs> hey. You know, and then the next day, I'd be, you know, back to Bill. male student. And, you know, <laughs> and I, I actually have a 16 year old uh, son. And I'm like, dude, you're like perfect. You know, uh, remember the movie Porky's? Oh, know? yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> you know? oh, yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm like, you don't even have to drill a hole in the wall anymore. No. All you no. have to do is identify i'm a girl yeah <laughs> yeah you just sit in there and be like hee, 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 hee. hey hey on that on that note did you see that post uh two days ago somebody posted on on one of our our uh, internal websites you know with the the spec ops guys and they, they had that marine that just broke the like the marine corps record for deadlift the, the female record did you see this yeah six, six, 680 pounds and, and, and it's a dude about your side, you know, that identifies as a female that's in the Marine Corps. And, hey, having been in the Marines, and you certainly you know, worked with Marines your entire career, you're just yeah. like, come on, man. We're, we're living in a bizarre world right now, man. We're living in a bizarre world. And uh, it, it's strange. I mean, women, they have a lot of traits and uh, that are better yeah. than men. You know, Hands they, down. Hands down. they, Hands they down. do a lot of things that men can't do. You know, uh, I, I remember, you know, back in high school and, uh, college where, where they, where people would bring up that, you know, women are better at X, Y, and B yeah. because that's the way they're wired, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And whenever you get a man like me, I mean, I'm a pretty big boy, you know, I'd love to be on the girls wrestling team, yeah. you know, Damn. I mean, I would dominate, uh, of course, you know, I, I'm, uh, I, I'd hate to say it, but you know, I'd love to wrestle. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd even do like two women at once <laughs> in, in, baby I mean, oil, I mean, in baby oil or mud or something. Yeah. Like, is that, I mean, I mean, do they do that in high school? No, but no, thank anyway, God. Anyway. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I'd, I'd probably put some um, Vaseline or some baby <laughs> oil like down my shirt or something, and and then right before be like, okay, wrestling match, let's get ready. And then I'd be like, time out, time out, hang on. <laughs> oh, we're being like, okay, now we're gonna wrestle. <laughs> Why do you think? That, I mean, may, may, I mean, a lot of people don't know my my personality. And they would think, you know, like, like oh, I'm serious, which I am. But uh, you'd be like, damn, really, Bill? You're going out there to, you know, show the world? Yeah, as a joke, how stupid it's been. Yeah, that, and that's exactly. So I don't know if you saw, there was the, the, the head coach of the Canadian powerlifting team, right? So in Canada, 
they they have a rule that says that if you identify as a certain gender on the day of the athletic competition, going back to what you were saying, you're allowed to compete. So this dude, head coach of the Canadian powerlifting team, you can look this up last year, big beard, massive, about your size, right? Shows up one yeah. day because they have a, a trans um, competitor that's been breaking all the women's records in these powerlifting yeah. competitions. So the, the head coach of the powerlifting team in Canada shows up one day and goes, uh, yeah, I'm a woman. And they're like, all right. He goes in there and breaks that trans record into bench press by like 120 pounds. Yeah, just crushed it. Crushed it. And people are making it. And he goes, you know what, man? I did this, to your point, just to show how ridiculous this is getting. You know, and you look at, like, I think about the Marine Corps. You know, we've got the first female Marine that legitimately passed BRC. And yeah. by all accounts, her Sergeant uh, Barth, her, her last name is Barth. Man, you look at her, I mean, she's in great shape. We talked to some instructors. Those guys said she rocked it. She's a sniper now. I think she just, you know, uh, graduated from combat and dive school, if I'm not mistaken. You think about how hard she had to work, you know, oh, to get to that place and how much she had to bust her rear end, you know, and, you know, good, good on her, man. She earned every, every accolade she gets, man. Then you got these dudes that are going to take an opportunity from, from other women. You know, I mean, I just, it's, it's deplorable yeah. to me. And again, you've got, you've got a daughter and it's just, you know, and imagine if she's playing college sports and she had an opportunity, you know, for a scholarship or whatever in college. And suddenly it's taken because some dude decides, you know, he wants to wrestle, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and, uh, uh, hey, hey, go ahead. Oh, no, I was, you know, my, uh, my daughter's in college right now and, you know, all these protests are going on and I am so fortunate that, I have a brilliant, uh, critical thinker as a daughter, uh, and we have good debates about what's going on. It's interesting. Yeah. And, um, you know what? I, I am very proud of her for her views and how she is dealing with the chaos that's going on on campus. Yeah. I didn't think about that. And she's a political science major, if I, if I recall too. So she's probably really putting a lot of thought into this. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, she is. That's awesome, so, man. Yeah, that, that's good to hear, man. So I don't want to talk too much about her because I don't want some weird stalker trying to figure out who she is. But man, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Oh, hey, so I'm, uh, wait, wait, ahead. real quick for all those weird stalkers. If, if, <laughs> if, if I could actually show a video, which I don't have queued up of her probably when she was like nine, um, going through my pistol qualification course that I taught <laughs> yeah. all my kids, uh, stalkers would probably be more like, huh, that purse <laughs> looks kind of heavy. Is yeah, that I'm money gonna... or is that something heavier? <laughs> that she actually knows how to use. Yeah, yeah that she, she knows how to use. But <laughs> hey, so on to sports, man. Let's talk about this, man. Uh, so Mike Tyson, man. I'm, I'm a huge Tyson fan. You are too. I mean, we, we grew up watching boxing. And yeah. he, used to, he used to come to my, my place uh, when I do the boxing uh, there in, in Chula Vista when we were recon instructors, right? Because yeah. Heather and mm -hmm. I used to always get the, the boxing matches. This is before big screen TVs were really big screen. But uh, yeah. man, Tyson, but he's fighting this, this knucklehead Jake Paul. And so my understanding... Because Tyson was kind of taking it like, you know, hey, it's a good moneymaker. And then apparently Jake Paul made fun of the fact that Tyson's young daughter had passed away. That that seems like probably not a great move um, um, in my mind. Mike Tyson is an amazing boxer, you know, um, to poke the bear. Uh <laughs> That's an understatement, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I I mean, there there are some things of which which I am good at. You know, I'm not great at, but if I was going up against someone that was great at something that I was good at, and uh, you know, I would go up there and just talk mad shit, um, knowing that this other person's gonna pummel me, I I'm I'm not gonna poke the bear, man. Well, in pummel, you know. you, here's a man that can hit you so hard, he can like shatter bones. You know, I mean, I mean, it, hey, let, let's watch yeah, this yeah. video real quick of him working out. This guy is 57. I, He's older than you and me. He's 57. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, let's watch this real quick because I, if for anybody that hasn't seen 
this dude working out. It is, uh, in my mind, it is terrifying. Eh, today was the day, you know. Play with fire, sometimes happens. <laughs> I mean, dude, we're talking a 57-year-old man that fast. And, and that was like only like his fifth workout getting ready for this fight. And apparently he's decided he's taking it very seriously because Jake Paul just rubbed him the wrong way. And like you said, poke the bear. He, he truly is the, the bear. I can't see this going well for Jake Paul. I don't care how old Mike Tyson is. Look at the shape he's in right now. Look how hard he's hitting. And to your point, you know, people look at him as this brute. Man, that guy's a master, master of the sweet science. I mean, that dude's footwork, his hand movement, his head movement, everything. He may have slowed down a step or two, but it's still it's still Iron Mike Tyson. That's it. Um, and I'm, I'm going to kind of use this this analogy here. You know, uh, I uh, grew up on, you know, like a farm and doing like farm work, you know, and a lot of the high schools I went to three different high schools. Um, one of them was in Fireball, California. A bunch Fireball, of Fireball, California. I didn't know there was such a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, corn-fed farmers out there. You know where where you know they never went to the gym. Yep, you know that's because right. they they were always outside. You know, working, driving right. tractor. You know, digging holes. You know, and uh, that was me. You know, and they had that natural strength. A cowboy yeah. strength, yeah, the that farmer that, strength, yep. That's it, you know. And yeah. if 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 you had someone that lived in the city and yeah. a farmer boy, and those two would go at it, the farmer boy is going to demolish the city yeah. kid if if they're both, you know, equal. And and that's Mike Tyson has spent his life boxing. That's right. You know, he he doesn't have to think about it. You know. It's just in him. Jake Paul, he's he's going down. And, you know, I, I hope he leaves with two ears, you know? <laughs> hey, I'm with you, man. I, I think, uh, and I was listening to, uh, I'm trying to remember who it was. It was Tyrone Woodley, who Jake Paul beat in a boxing match. But again, when you're fighting an MMA fighter, even a, a good MMA boxer is not a pro boxer, right? I mean, they're, they're not yep. a boxer. And uh, so he beat Tyrone Woodley, but Tyrone Woodley's like, he's like, listen, man, Mike Tyson is one of those people. He's, he can hit you so hard that he, he can literally hurt you if, if, if you're not used to being hit like that. He said he can accidentally like rearrange your organs and stuff, you know. And so when you got somebody coming at you with and, and it was uh, uh, Sugar Chain Mosley who we fought last. Or I, no, I forget who it was. Who did you fight in that uh, that exhibition four years ago? But uh, he, he was like, man, he, right. he punched me in the chest and it felt like being kicked by a mule. Yeah, I just I don't see this going well for that kid Jake Paul, man. And 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 just watching that uh video clip in which you yeah. just played, I mean, I could feel, you know, every time he would hit that. I mean, oh yeah. I I I winced and I'm just watching it. Oh because yeah. Because you could see the facial expression, and that guy's wearing, you know, big thick armor, you know, where you know it's supposed to take a lot of the uh punishment away from your body. But you could just see in the guy's face that man. Oh yeah. When he was laying into him, oh man, yeah. You could just see him like wince. And uh, oh yeah. Jake Paul, he, he's he's not going to be able to take a punch. So I'm with you, man. It's it's one thing getting hit by you know an MMA fighter that's 180 pounds. Another thing getting hit by a true pro heavyweight, top of their game. Even at his age, he may have slowed down, but you know they say power is the last thing to go. Right. Power is the last thing that goes. And, you know, I've spent my life doing combat sports like you and stuff. Power is the last thing that goes. And, uh, you know, he's still got the power. He may not have the speed. And, you know, Tyson was being interviewed and he was like talking about Jake Paul. And he goes, man, I see his punches coming from a mile away. He goes, I'm 57 and I still see those punches. <laughs> you know, and I look at him and I know enough about boxing. I've done enough boxing. Yeah, you can tell Jake Paul, he, he's impressed me with the fact that he hasn't been doing it very long, quite frankly. And yep. he's done pretty damn well. He, he's thrown himself into it. He looks pretty good. He, he, you know, if he were actually fighting professional boxers and not MMA guys and guys over the hill and stuff like that, he'd be a journeyman, right? He'd, he'd be a yeah. decent journeyman, um, but he's certainly not at the top of his game. But no. uh, the only advantage I think he has here is the fact he's 27, Tyson's uh, 57. But I don't know. The rules came out. They're only fighting in two-minute rounds. 
So it's not three minute rounds, two minute rounds, which helps Tyson big time. Yeah, because uh, I can just just see Tyson going in there, man. Be like, oh, yep. two minutes. I I got this two minute drill. Oh yeah, you know, and just nonstop. Just I'm hoping, I'm hoping they just pummels in. And you know, what? I'm gonna say it right here. You know, I made a joke about the ear earlier. You know, with what Jake Paul actually said. Yeah. I hope he comes away with both his lips because I can just see Mike Tyson, man, getting in there and then just be like, you want to talk shit? I'll make yep. sure uh, yep. never talk shit again. Yeah. And I mean, that's like that. Not unwritten rule. You don't talk, you know, and boxers are always trying to promote the fights. You know, man, you can talk shit all you want because you want to get the you know promotion, but you don't talk about somebody's family. Certainly don't talk about somebody's dead child. I mean, that you want to talk about crossing that line and, you know, to, to a degree that's just disrespectful doesn't even begin to approach it right and uh yep. yeah poke, poke in the bear hey so let, let's do this man because we talked about the first amendment you know we always got to talk about second amendment you know it's uh you know interesting second amendment here we go again we're in election season you know it's going to be brought up gun violence uh, i'm one of these people i've written a lot on this topic said a lot on it you know you, you hear people say gun violence and i'm like what the hell is gun violence there is no such thing as gun violence there is violence, violence perpetrated with a gun or violence perpetrated with an ax or a bat or fists or yeah. feet or, but gun violence is a misnomer. And they always want to point out, you know, AR 15s, you know, which in 2002 under the FBI database, you know, 386 people were killed by AR 15s. You know how many people were killed by, by hammers, like 600, <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, and here's the thing, this is going to, and, and Hey, people can take this however they want you get a couple of and, and, and again just hear me out <laughs> a couple of white kids few white kids shot up in a school by an ar-15 everybody wants to get rid of the guns 500 black kids are shooting each other in chicago every year nobody says a damn word about it nah. so who's really the racist here now i'm not saying that's a good thing i think it's a terrible thing but nobody is crying out and saying hey man we've got these young black kids brown kids shooting the hell out of each other not just uh, we live in the houston area i live in houston right Houston, Chicago, Atlanta, Dallas, Oakland, name it, right? Yep. That's okay. But you know what? As soon as it comes into white people's neighborhoods and it's an AR-15, now suddenly it's gun violence. We've got to get rid of guns, you know? Yeah, and, you know, my my uh, my wife, like three days ago, she's like, what's up with all these stabbings? You know, <laughs> you know and and uh we, we were i i can't remember if it was in the uk or yeah, scotland you know, man scotland or, has a lot of stabbings i and, and my wife's like you know why are people like with machetes and everything i'm like well because they don't have guns you, you know so they just use the tools in which they have available you know and that goes we'll get your you know it's violence you know um people who are violent you know if the only thing they have is a pencil, you know, that's what they're going to use to hurt people with. Um, well, and I'm looking and, this up real right now because believe it or not, they've got laws against, um, let's see, it, it's against the law in England to own a knife or sell a knife under certain circumstances. Because again, guns were outlawed, stabbings yep. went through the roof. So now they're regulating knives. And, you know, and, and once they regulate the knives uh, more, the next thing they're going to regulate are the hammers that's you right you know and because people are going to you know oh there goes two by fours um you know oh you can't have a bat so it's it's not the object that's doing the violence it is the actual individual bingo thank and, you brother bingo yeah yeah and and you know and the second amendment says oh man um shit say Tell, tell me the second amendment real quick. Here. Yeah, so so the second amendment says that uh, here. Let's let's let's. So I don't because people get very uptight if you get this wrong. So I let's make sure. Let's make sure we're we're reading it verbatim here. <laughs> so we've got it absolutely. I'm pulling up my because uh, a well-regulated militia, comma, and that's a big point of debate for people. Mm -hmm. Well-regulated well militia, comma, being necessary to the security of a free state, comma. The right of the people to keep and bear arms, comma, shall not be infringed. Now, let me, before you jump on that, let me make a statement real quick. It's really fascinating because I'll hear people that don't really know a lot about 
uh, weapons and stuff say, well, that means you're allowed to own a musket. No, 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 no. So back in the day, they did have rifles back in the Revolutionary Day. But notice it says arms. And to me, that points to the fact that the founding fathers, um, you know, we talk about how good the Constitution is. They recognized that things evolve. So they didn't just say muskets. They didn't say cannons. They said arms shall not be infringed. Um, so today, arms are different than they were. It's not limited to muskets. And but, you know, we love to debate that. But, you know, it's a constitutional you know, amendment. We're allowed to have firearms. And Biden, once again, through the ATF, is trying to do an end around and restrict that even further. Yep. And 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 one of the key points in there is shall not be um, infringed, infringed upon, you know, that's right. That's and, right. And Grant, you know what? I mean, fully automatic guns are, you know, great to shoot. Um, <laughs> I wish that I could own one, but I can't. I, I do. I do understand things like that. Sure. But uh, I'm a big gun guy. Yeah, um, and uh, if if rounds for my AR-15 that I lost in that boating accident did not cost, <laughs> you know, 50 cents a round. So, you know, yeah. a 30, you know, a 30 round magazine you know, cost 15 bucks for that, yep, you know, yep. 30 seconds of shooting. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm not made of money, brother. Uh, so I don't shoot as much as I used to, but you know what? It shall not be infringed upon. Yeah. Yeah. You know? and, and that's, you know, and, and they, they try, and that's why we've got a Supreme court that will look at this and say, you can't. And certainly there are, and the Supreme court has upheld that reasonable, uh, restrictions are okay. You certainly, you don't want 12 year old kids walking around with firearms at school. And I get that. And you know, yeah. we certainly, but it's, you know, people, you, you, Hey, you know what the AR and AR means, right? You know, that means assault rifle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Armal, for, for you watching that don't know, it means Armalite rifle is a company called Armalite that actually created the AR 15. It doesn't mean assault mm -hmm. rifle. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny what, what people, you know, have to say and think, and, you know, pistols kill a lot more people well, don't kill are used to kill a lot more people every year than, you know, air 15s. Uh, but again, the, you know, it's the vividness effect, you know, you shoot up and, and, and again, nobody, you know, it's, it's terrible. Anytime somebody's killed by a gun, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be it's an innocent person and people, you know, I love it when the president comes out and goes, well, you don't need 30 rounds to kill a deer none of your business. I'm allowed to have an AR-15. As a matter of fact, in most states, as you know, if you're going to hunt deer, uh, you're restricted on how many rounds you can actually have in a magazine uh, because they don't want you going out there with 30 rounds. So, you know, even in shotguns, you know, you got to put, you got to put plugs in shotguns, things like that. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and, and let's just, what is the second amendment, second amendment there for, you know, way back in the day, you know, it was because the federal government would deprive the states That's right. of, um, you know, protecting the, themselves. So, That's right. You know, the Second Amendment is not so we can hunt. You That's know, right. The Second Amendment is so if the federal government ever tries to oppress us, yep. you know, we can rise up against them and, uh, you know take care of it well you know and, and again going back to our feckless uh president joe biden i remember a few years ago he was trying to make a, a an argument over why you don't need an error 15 and he said i'm paraphrasing here but i've written it down somewhere and he said something just as inane as you can imagine bumbling joe saying and he said something like well you don't need an error 15 they're harder to aim and they're harder to this and that he goes what i tell jill his wife is he goes i tell her if somebody comes up in the driveway and you're worried about it. You just walk outside with that double barrel shotgun and you fire two blasts in the air. And I'm thinking that's the worst advice I've ever heard. So if somebody is not threatening you comes into your driveway, you should take a firearm outside and shoot it up in the air to scare them away. That that's highly illegal, unethical against any kind of gun handling procedures. I mean, what the hell are you talking about? But it just shows how ignorant he is on any of this. But to your point, designed to help us. And when people, you know, Joe Biden came out and said, you know, you can't fight 
the military with AR-15s, you need F-15s. No, you don't. Insurgencies work, man. Look throughout history. Uh, as yeah. a matter of fact, there's one insurgency that comes to mind back in 1776 um, that formed <laughs> formed our country, right? <laughs> I mean, most powerful most powerful empire in the world had a bunch of colonists, you know, that yeah. said, you know, F you, man. And yeah. uh, insurgencies work. And, and uh, Neil, I think right now we are seeing an insurgency on our college campuses. We are. Yeah. Because I don't believe a lot of those people that are protesters believe in the Constitution. You know? Oh, I would agree. I, I would agree. I, I uh, do not think that they are pro-American at all. And I believe that the college students, man, um, they're getting, I, I don't want to use the word brainwashed, but, but they're letting outside individuals who they do this for a living. Oh yeah. And, uh, you know, they know how to get people riled up. You know, uh, I, I was reading, uh, uh, so, something online where it says, you know, they have different, you know, they have different bands in which they're using. So, you know, the ones with red bands, you know, they're the ones that don't care if they get arrested. So they're going to be on the front line of the agitators, yep. you know, and, and then you have the individuals with the yellow band, which not coward. Anyway, the yellow <laughs> bands are, are the ones that are more inside and they do not want to be arrested. Right, you know, right, whether, right. You know, and uh, one of the individuals who spoke on conditions of and an interview says, you know, I'm on a visa, you know, going to college. So I don't want to be arrested because it may impact my standing here at this university. And right off the top of my head, I'm like, yeah. well, yeah, it should. And yep. your visa should be canceled and you should be gone. Yep. Yeah, you're, you're here on a visa protesting, you know, in our country, about our country. You know, it's interesting you bring that up. So back in the 1970s, 60s, it was it was uh, Khrushchev from the Soviet Union that used the term. And they, they believe it didn't originate with him, but it was used by the, the Soviets at the time. They called uh, these American college mm -hmm. kids, they called them useful idiots. And he said, look, they, they don't understand communism at all, but it doesn't matter to us because they're promoting our ideals. They're, to us, they're useful idiots. And that's all they are today. They're useful idiots. They don't understand anything about the conflict over there. They don't understand anything about anything, the anti-Semitism. But you know what? It's supporting somebody else's agenda. And the, it, right. unfortunately, it's at these kids' own expense. You know, and, you know, these kids' parents are paying for college, most of them. You know, these idiots are getting arrested. Um, you know, look, college kids are always going to protest. I get it, whatever protest. But, you know, when you're again, you're burning down your campus and things like that. But I agree with you, Bill. I think the indoctrination of the schools, we're starting to see it come full circle now in the colleges. These kids, they, I don't believe that they're proud to be Americans. I don't believe that they believe in the Constitution. Well, let, let me let me correct that. Because on that note, I would say I was very dispirited until I started reading the news this morning. And I'm seeing the Pi Kappa Pi, I think, fraternity out of University of North Carolina. Did you see that? They stood up, yep. refused the flag to be taken down. Right yep. on those, uh, you know, I was going to call them, you know, boys, but, you know, men. I mean, it's, and then there's a young woman um, at a university that refused to have the flag desecrated. And they were spitting on her and stuff like that. And, and there's starting to be these counter protests of patriotic, you know, college students. And I'm like, man. Um, that, that makes me feel good. Did 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 you hear what that uh that a woman said? No, you know, man. about about them taking down the flag over her dead body. Oh man, I love you, that. You know, and that's what America is all about. That, that's you know, it, right there. You you can protest all you want underneath our flag. You know what, people in um Palestinians. They can't protest, <laughs> you know, they can't protest under their flag, you know, but we can under ours. And, yeah, what, what, yeah. What, you know, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Columbia president, uh, Shafiq, you know, she's saying, you know, these past two weeks, um, are the most difficult in the history of the university with the turmoil and tension, 
uh, you know, as the president of that university, if she would just communicate maybe a little bit better, yeah, you know, saying, hey, you know, you can protest all you like, but do not do these things here. Don't break the windows. That's right. You know, be peaceful. Yep. You know, don't hurt people. Yep. You know, um, but you can protest all you. Why? Why? There should be no turmoil and tension, you know, because just do it legally, you know, yeah. um, get a thousand people out there that believe in your cause. And if you really think that there needs to be a change, make it change. But, you well, know, with, they're, they're, they're petulant children, though. Right. And that, that's a problem is nobody yeah. will listen to them if they just, you know, say, rah, rah, rah. We disagree. You just ignore them and walk on by. So they're petulant children. So they have to act like a, you know, petulant child and throw a temper tantrum and, you know, break their toys. And like you, know, you said, useful idiots. That's all they are, man. But yeah. I, but I am glad. And I was looking for that young woman's name, man, because uh, I wanted to give her a shout out on here. But, yeah, I was super impressed with her. And the, uh, you know, the fraternity guys, let's see if we can find her name real quick. Give her a shout out on here. And, you know, oh, man, you know, as, as I'm watching those protests and, you know, they're, they're building their encampments and things like that. You know, as long as you're peaceful, you don't need to do any of that, you know. But when you sit there and you're like. Don't let this Jew come into yeah. the university. Yeah. You, I mean, that's just wrong. Yeah. You know, you should be yeah. able to um, protest, talk to people, and just listen to some of them, you know, talk to some reporters or things like that, you know, where, where they're like, oh, sorry, I'm, I can't talk to you. You know, we have certain people. Well, if you're protesting, you should have a good understanding of what you're protesting. That's right. Right. You know, and you should be able to speak clearly and articulate. That's right. What you want done. And, and, and look at some of their, their uh, demands, you know, divest <laughs> in Israel, you know, have the government, you know, do this. And, you know, the president of the university be like, um, yeah, we don't have the power do that we're yeah. here just to to train you make sure you guys to, get an education yeah <laughs> yes yeah. but you know the universities they're a they're a breeding this you know it, you know they are so, man it's funny i listened to uh some of the protesters like they had this uh i don't know it was a young woman a doctoral student and she was like we need humanitarian aid we should be allowed to get food delivered through like grubhub or something she's like this is just basic and then they're like okay what kind of food well it needs to be vegan non you know what non gmo this that i mean these kids are out in left field man i'm like man you guys are some hardcore protesters you know it's like the sit-ins back yeah. in the 60s you know yeah, <laughs> you, you guys are you know in your north face tents yeah yeah what what, what i'm curious about are the people on the hunger strike I, yeah I, I wonder how long that's going to go uh, oh yeah oh yeah who, who was who was the guy in congress that did the hunger strike and it <laughs> lasted just, and it lasted like a day yeah yeah eight eight hours yeah you know he, he didn't drink water for eight hours yeah on the steps of congress yeah and he said he was getting weak and he was like well you know it's really hot and i was like well you know you really you said a strong message there you yeah. know it's kind of like when pete, pete Buttigieg when he got caught um having secret service drive him and his bike like uh, a block away from the Capitol. Then he pulls his bike out, jumps on it so he can get the photo op of him riding his bike to the Capitol. And people are like, dude, we just saw the secret service drive with you in, in the back of the SUV and drop your bike off. You idiot. You know, yeah. but yeah. And so, so Biden uh, the other day, so of course he comes out and finally makes a statement about anti-Semitism about time. Right. But he can't yeah. say anti-Semitism is wrong. Hard stop period. Boom. He has to go, anti-Semitism has no place or something in our society, dot, 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 much like Islamophobia. Dude, we're not seeing any Islamophobia right now. You know what we're seeing? We're seeing anti-Semitism front and center on everything. And again, I'll say it again, for all these people that are protesting what they think is Israel, are you really protesting Israel or are you protesting your Jewish neighbor that you don't like or your boss or the kid you know that goes to school with your child or whatever? Because again, if you want to look at you know sins of countries, 
hey, man, you don't have to look much further than the United States. We got a million Native Americans living in uh, reservations right now, a million that were displaced through our own actions. But they'll walk by or drive past that reservation to protest Israel. Yeah, you ought to protest. You ought to protest. We got plenty of stuff to protest right here. You know, yep. as, as Elvis Presley said, clean up your own backyard. But nah, that's that's not a sexy thing to do. No. You know, it's easier easier to bitch about somebody else's backyard. Yep, one hundred percent. Yeah. All right, brother. Yeah. I, I think we're we're out of time. We're right at fifty minutes, dude. All right, nice, nice. And, 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 uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, just so you know, you know how big the office that I'm in right now is. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, I'm I'm actually out here at my property, and. um, <laughs> And, you know, I, I got this great, you know, green screen behind me, but I think my dog took a big shit back there, man. You guys can't <laughs> really? smell it, but man, I'm sitting here going like, Chris, man, you got to end this, man. Cause I got to go open a window, dude. I got to take right, my dog out. <laughs> All right, brother. Go, yeah. go, go take code out and, uh, okay. we'll catch up. We'll catch up next week, but, uh, thank you everybody for joining us and listening to us, uh, Again, a recon up with Chris and Bill, and we'll catch you guys on the flip side. And let me, uh, I'm going to end this here in just a couple. All right. Thanks, Bill. All right. Hey there. Are you ready for a little recon? Chris and Bill going to take you where you've never gone. Current events, politics, and the military. Hold on tight.